let's say I come from a QAQC background. I have to be doing uh, for the next six months, every day, I have to create the exact same sequence to run my stability studies. I could always pull up a previous sequence, but then I have to go through and I have to individually name different samples, maybe change the locations of where these things are, et cetera. Again, it can be very cumbersome to do that from a previous sequence. That's still perfectly fine. But we also have another tool at your disposal that you can use, especially if you're doing this type of routine analysis where you have to do multiple types of the exact same type of sequence. Before we run through that, again, you need to select the icon immediately below where it says sequence dash untitled. Select the very first icon, and that is to create a new sequence from scratch. I am not going to save my sequence. I'm going to say no, don't save it. And now in the upper black ribbon, I'm going to select the very last window that's in that Windows section. That's called Sequence Creation Template. So the first thing I need to do is I need to assign an acquisition method to this sequence template. Now, in order to do that, I need to select the checkbox immediately to the left of four all sample types for the acquisition method. Click on that checkbox. It puts in a check mark for all sample types and immediately opens up three dots to the left of that check mark. Now I can select those three dots and my AMX method I created several steps back and select open. Now, immediately below those lists of things, the acquisition method, processing method, sample prep method, injection source, and bracketing mode, I have a series of three panels. A left-hand panel, the sample panel in the middle, and then the start panel on the right-hand side. Now, the middle panel where it says sample, I should have for several of these um, areas, like the sample name, there should be a right-facing arrow or three dots to the right of that field. It's not there because that window is too small. So I need to take my mouse, hover over that right, fa that, um, right panel that separates the sample from the start panel, click on it, and drag it over to the right until I see right-facing arrows and three dots to the right of several of these windows. So the first thing I am confronted with, according to my SOP, each one of my stability um, sequences has to start with a blank. So on the left-hand panel in the lower ribbon or in the lower panel, immediately to the right of where it says start, select the very first pull-down menu, and notice that there are a series of different types of samples there. And each one of those sample types has its own specific color. I'm going to select the blank, which get, has a gray color immediately to the left of it as well. In the middle panel, it says blank as the type of sample. For my sample name, I'm going to call it blank with a dash. You don't have to use a dash. I just like using dashes. Then notice I've got that right-facing arrow again. I'm going to use that right-facing arrow to open up software tokens and I'm going to use the short local date and time. That's automatically going to fill in for me. My vial position is going to be vial position number one and one injection per vial. Uh, my acquisition method is automatically filled in. I don't fill in the processing or sample prep method, but I do want to fill in the data file. I'm again going to use that right-facing arrow to the right of the data file text field. And I am going to make that the same as my sample name. So notice again, anytime I'm using software tokens, they get filled in with that triangular bracket. That's a visual cue that I am looking at a software token. Now next, according to my SOP, I have to run a triplicate injection of one single level of my calibration standard. So once again, on the uh, lower left-hand panel, just to the right of where it says start, I'm going to use that pull-down menu again, select K 
Cal standard, which has a blue icon to the left of it, in the middle panel, I am going to fill in STD as the name of my sample name, along with a dash and my right-facing arrow is going to be the short local date and time. Now, this vial position, it's not going to be vial position number one because one was already my blank. So I'm going to change that vial from one to two. And I'm going to change the injection per vial from one to three because it needs to be done in triplicate. And then finally, the right-facing arrow to the right of the data file, I'm going to select the short local date and time again. Now, according to my SOP, after my blank and after my calibration standard run in triplicate, I can run up to 10 unknown samples. So in the cycle portion of the lower left-hand panel, I'm going to click that sample, which has a green icon associated with the sample, with the unknown samples. And I'm going to change that 1 to 10 instead. In the middle frame, I'm going to label my samples, sample, dash, and once again, using my right-facing arrow, short local date and time. Again, I've already used vial position number one for my blank, number two for my calibration standard. So I want this starting vial position to be starting vial position number three and increment by one. And finally, my data, data file, I'm going to use that right-facing arrow and select that my data file name is going to be the same as my sample name. Once again, according to my SOP, after every 10 unknown samples, I have to run a QC check to make sure that things are not going awry. So in the cycle middle portion of that left panel, I'm going to use that first pull-down menu and select QC check. Now the QC check, I'm going to call it or name it QC dash, using the right-facing arrow, short local date and time. Now, even though I am making this sequence for 10 unknown samples, it's actually far more flexible than that. Maybe today I have 10, but tomorrow I have 50. The next day I have 70. I don't want the QC check to get in the middle of where I put my samples. So I am going to put my vial position for the QC check. My vial is going to be position number 100. This way I can fill up the whole rest of the auto sampler with my unknown samples and know my QC check is out of the way of all those unknown samples. Again, it's still one injection per vial. And finally, my data file name using that right-facing arrow will be the same as my sample name. And then finally, according to my SOP, to make sure that there's no carryover of anything on my system once I have completed all of my injections, at the end of my run, I must run another blank. So on the left-hand lower uh, panel, in the end section, use that first pull-down menu and select blank. And notice that once you do that, the middle section or the middle panel automatically fills in with the information we had placed in the starting of that blank in that upper ribbon or in the upper panel on the left-hand side. Now, I can leave it this way, and I can use the exact same blank vial, or I can decide to use a different, different one and fill in that information here. That's fine, too. So we have now created our sequence template. Now, I realize it might take some time to create your sequence template. It might take you 20, 30, 40 minutes. But I'm going to show you where you save time in the long run. So now we need to save this sequence template by, by selecting that very far in the upper ribbon, just underneath where it says sequence creation template dash untitled in this sequence creation template window. The fourth icon from the left is the one with that old-fashioned disk drive in it with a plus. Click on that where we save this sequence creation template. Give it a name, rich template or whatever template you want to call yours, and notice that it's going to be saved as a .stx. 
for a sequence template. Then select Save. Now for the window of the sequence creation template, you can click the red X in the upper uh, right-hand corner because we don't need that window open anymore. Now when we're back at the sequence dash untitled, immediately above the column for the sequence table that says run type, there is a little icon or a little item that is called apply template. You might not have even seen that unless you were looking for it. Select the apply template. That opens up for us a sequence template dialog box. Now, it was created originally for 10 samples, but today I have 25. I'm going to type in 25 in the total number of samples. Make that 25. Immediately below that, it has the sequence template, and there is a red box there because I need to highlight the sequence template I want to use. So I use the three dots to the right of that, it opens up the sequence template section of the control panel, or excuse me, of the project. Then click on the template you just created from the previous exercise. Select open and apply template. And in three mouse clicks, you have now created a unique sequence that you do not have to change. Three mouse clicks. And it shows us I've got my blank as the very first injection then my calibration standard in my second vial position, that is level number one, and that's three injections per vial. Then I have samples one through 10, followed by my first QC check, second samples one through 10, followed by a second QC check, and the final one through five, followed by a final QC check, because even though I didn't ask for it, it knows I need a QC check prior to exiting this particular sequence. 